Hey there. Welcome to another issue of The Mentor Podcast. I'm Ron Legrand, and beside me is Tish Hill. We have a very unusual podcast we are going to do this time because we've been getting so many inquiries about what's going on in our commercial world since we did a commercial boot camp in uh, November here in Jacksonville. At that time, I formed a group called the Com uh, Commercial Mastermind Group. I did not know what I was getting into. The purpose of this group is, of course, to learn about commercial properties, and we meet three times a year here in Jacksonville. And no, I'm not plugging that group right now. You can't get in right now if you want to, but that group has generated an awful lot of partnership deals for us since uh, two months, it's been two months, right? Yep, about two months since we left. I didn't know how busy we were going to get, how fast. I should have, because after I taught that event, people figured out actually how you can do commercial deals without using your money or credit. And they are doing it right and left with us. She is the one doing most of the work. Um, well, I don't know. I'm doing quite a bit of work myself in this case, which I'm not used to. But uh, to, to, it takes both of us combined to actually process the uh, deals that come in. So what I want to show you here first is what I carry with me every day. <laughs> there, right here are some envelopes, some folders. And each one of those little black clips there in that folder is a commercial property deal that I am currently working on. That's one folder, <clears throat> and there's another folder right there. Yeah. And so you can see I got 22 here in my hands, 24 actually, and that's after we've right. probably turned down an equal amount, at least. right? At least. Uh, so the ones in my folder here are in the process. There's letters of intent out on most of them, which is an, uh, the offer. And then I've got a couple here. I've got about uh, five of these. I've got a call the agent back today on. And then I have two more folders here that are actually properties we have under contract. So um, I've got a bunch of them in here that are very close. I'd say out of the, I don't know, your guess, maybe at least 50, 50 deals presented right now, right? Well over. At least. Yeah. yeah, well over that. Yeah. So what happens is when one's presented, we get all, all the information. We go back to the student and I ask them to fill in the missing pieces so I can make a decision whether to move forward or not. And if I move forward, we just keep on collecting more information. All right, here's one in my hand that we got under contract last Friday in Atlanta. And it's 23 acres of land. And so today, fortunately, this one came with an appraisal. And it's a bank repo. So we've been studying the appraisal and the survey to try to make some conclusions out of it. Not like in what we're seeing so far, um, but we're still doing the due diligence. The due diligence is the investigation period between the time you, well, actually, well, before you put it under contract until you actually close on it. So I'm right now looking for land deals. Um, we have a couple that aren't land, don't we? I know we got a... We have a building in Texas that we're looking at. A building in Texas, a building in Missouri and a building somewhere else. They all run together they're, after they're, a while. Yeah, so. All right. So um, her job is collect all the information, put all the pieces together, take a look at everything, and deal with all the people involved. Um, the reason I like land is really very simple. And that is, it's really very simple. <laughs> <laughs> OK. There are no tenants. There are no buildings. There is no maintenance. I don't touch the land. I don't even walk on it most of the time. I don't mow any lawns. I don't do any of that junk. Now, let me start with a piece here that we have a couple of pieces here in Jacksonville. Before, we got them even before that boot camp. A student uh, brought them to me. Uh, why don't you describe them? Well, we've got one uh, in, off Normandy Boulevard yep. that uh, we bought at a tax deed sale, very last minute. Yeah, we got the information on this 14 acres about, what, three, four days before the tax deed sale. Yeah, about 24 hours. First thing I said is, no way, I ain't moving that fast. And yet, I moved that fast. Yeah. Because this piece of land was I don't, assessed for seven, eight, nine hundred thousand something there like that. That's what we, yeah. we thought, yep. Yep. Well, that's what it was assessed at. Yep. And I uh, wound up buying it for 215000 And my partner got the money from a, 
a very good looking partner, uh, <laughs> about six to, yeah, it was me. Okay, I put up the money. <laughs> so I put up the money to buy it, and now we own it. Okay, problem is it had to be um, rezoned because it was owned light commercial and we needed it more heavy. That is going to be done next month. And we had to run it through quiet title suit because it was a tax deed sale. That is already done, right? Yep. Okay. So here's the deal. Paid two fifteen dollars for it, had it surveyed because we needed to have it done before we could get it rezoned, had it appraised as if it was rezoned commercial, and the property we paid two fifteen dollars for appraised for $1,680,000. So you can see what happens when we take a piece of underzoned land and we upgrade the zoning, or upgrade the use, or build a higher and better use. All that is just paperwork. There's no physical labor on our part. So we're gonna put the land on the market with a good broker and forget about it. Don't know how long it'll take to sell it. Might take a month, might take a year, might take two years, but however long it takes, <laughs> the rate of return is gonna be pretty well, pretty handsome. And remember, I'm not, uh, I went 10 feet on that land and I said, what am I doing here? Turn around and left. I ain't been back since, nor will I ever go back. So that's just one we got here in Jacksonville. And then we got another one. Yeah, the other one's a, a go-kart track. Out west a little. It's got a go-kart track. Well, actually, we can rent for, them, for it, ain't we? Yep, get them uh, in every month I, I for their we, weekend we, uh, races. We, we need to go get a free go-kart ride. What do you I think? I thought about that. Uh, yeah, okay. I think you bring so, your own go-kart to this track, though. Oh, oh. forget that. <laughs> So anyway, um, 13 acres, zone half commercial, half not. Same thing. Next month, the zoning will be finished. That's all we have to do is, is zone it. And it goes right back on the market, paid 150 for it. Yeah. And it's all funded by a private loan. And um, we're just going to put it back on the market. Our, our appraisal came in at $695. we are going to put it out at $895. All right? Because I think a $695 is low. Yeah. I do. All it right. Is. So that's just a couple we're playing with. Now, um, here's one. It's in Portage, Indiana. And frankly, Tish is sitting here with a microphone in her hand right now, wishing she was in the other room because we true. are closing this thing right now as we speak. Yep. Yep. I just signed the closing documents. So we got to get them back. So in that light. How do we close on real estate transactions today? It's called iPad <laughs> for me, <laughs> computer for yeah. her. Email. Email. She just mm -hmm. prints them out. I sign them. We send them back. So we just bought this property. Well, I guess we bought it. Um, yeah, she just left the bank with the money, and we bought it. We will we, buy it by the end of the day. They just don't know it yet. Okay. Yeah. So <laughs> here's the deal. This was brought to me by a student. Her name is Ann. She lives in um, Indiana. This is northern Indiana. And we actually started out with one nine acre parcel. All right, that's what we're closing on today. We're paying 100 grand for that nine acre parcel. But we also have the parcel next door under contract, which is 23 acres, and we're paying 175 for that. So we're putting them both together. Um, closing this one today, we'll close the other one next month. Now, what we have is 33 acres of woods right now, <laughs> but surrounded by commercial and residential property. So um, we will close on that land, and this one we're paying all cash for. Frankly, I got a bunch of them here that will probably be bought with owner financing with a down payment and a balloon on the balance for two or three years. hope you understand what that meant. That gives me a way to buy the property without having to fund the whole thing now and then take two or three years to get it turned around and sold to pay the seller off. I'm going to say that again because that's a really good strategy to buy this land. The land is all underused, undervalued, underzoned, or I wouldn't be buying it. Our play here is by buying underzoned or tying up underzoned land and then doing what we need to do, with, which, which we don't do anything but hire outsourced folks, and then putting it on the market or developing it or whatever you want to do with it. I'm done with developing. Tish and I went through 2008, and just to make it clear, I don't want to build a damn thing. Okay, <laughs> it's too risky. I'm not putting in any infrastructure, no roads, water, sewer. I'm not putting up any buildings. That is not the game I'm in. I already been there. I'm not going back. Way too risky. Uh, you know, 
2008 was not very kind to me, and I'm just not going to repeat that mistake. So now I find the land that I need to upgrade, and we sell it to builders or developers, somebody who wants to put in the infrastructure and build. God bless them. Uh, so that's our job. Or we just find undervalued land, and we put it back on the market and resell it. This piece in Atlanta here, if our due diligence works out, we're paying 375 for it, but we have an appraiser from the bank that sold it to us for 1.8 million. Now, whether it's worth that or not, yet to be determined, but well, I wouldn't touch this land. We just buy it cheap. We'll uh, do a few things that need to get done to make it easy for a buyer to buy it, but right back on the market um, if our due diligence pans out. Well, this thing in Portage, our due diligence has panned out because we're closing on it today. <laughs> and we have done due diligence, haven't we? Yes, we have. Describe to our listeners what we have a, what done on that land. Well, we ourselves have, uh, I have talked to the city a little bit, but we have a great attorney that we found up there in Portage yep. that um, has met with the city quite a few times. And uh, we also, after vetting quite a few folks, we hired some engineers to do phase one and wetland delineation reports for us. But we got um, our engineer from a broker. Mm, no, no, from the attorney. No, you didn't go with that engineer. All right, anyway, one, <laughs> yeah, but no, the attorney recommended one. He yeah. was in the wrong county, so he recommended the one we're using. Man. And our attorney, rec I mean, our, our first real estate broker that sold his property recommended to our attorney. Right. And that's exactly what I do everywhere I go, because when you ask me, how do you find these folks? I don't. I let the yep. first one in the door find the second one, and then the third one, and the fourth one. Yep. And I've developed projects in nine different states. In fact, I have eight states represented right here. I just counted them Wow! out of these uh, 22 lead deals that I'm working on. That's how we do it. Um, her and I don't do anything but find the people to do whatever work needs to be done. So let's take this portage one. Started yep. with the attorney. Yep. Okay. Had to hire him. All right. Then ultimately he went down and to the city and got their tentatively oral approval, though they'd be happy to have development come to this property, both residential and commercial. Right. So that was the first step. I didn't want to make sure I wasn't fighting the city. All right. Then we had to get a wetland delineation report. That means when we're buying land, we have to know how much of it we can build on, how much of it we can't, because obviously that'd kill a deal if it's too much wet land. You can't just dig a hole or you can't just bury a hole when you're developing property. <laughs> okay, we have all these government assisted authorities on your back and then we got the drainage and we got the FEMA and we got all that nonsense. Uh, so when you hear the word let, wetland, yes, sometimes you can mitigate it, but remember I'm not building anyway. I just want to know what a builder is going to want to look at when they buy this property from me. Uh, and the wetland delineation report came back. We also ordered a phase one study, which is a environmental study. Right. Make sure we didn't have any poison in the ground. Came back okay. And we had actually a lot less wetland than I thought we had. Yeah, me too, actually. Uh, out of this whole property, I didn't think we had, I thought we had a lot more than that. So uh, that was a good report. And frankly, that's what I was waiting on to get it closed today. We already did the title re report and all of that. So here we are after a few people have done their job. By the way, we met them. I went to Portage, Indiana yep. the other day. I drove my plane. I didn't drive it. I took my <laughs> plane up there. You went with me. Yep, we did. We had a great day. God, it was cold up there. It was cold. <sighs> It was cold up there. So anyway, I met our student, Ann, and then we had a meeting with the attorney, the engineer, and... Uh, the, they, were, they were all engineers. Yeah, the land yeah. inspector. Yeah. Yeah. One okay. does the surveying, one does the more detailed stuff. So anyway, we close on that today, and then we'll move by the other one. All right. After we do that, I'm simply going to get a, a plat mat drawn up. I'm letting the engineer draw a plat, half commercial, half residential, and what he thinks ought to go there. I don't know... You know, I'm, I don't draw maps, so I'm hiring him to do his job. And then when I get that map done, we'll take it to the city and get that plat approved. And, of course, now what happens to the value of the land? Well, I don't know. I don't know the value yet because I haven't got the plat map yet. So I can't hand it to an appraiser and say appraise it as if this was rezoned. Mm -hmm. uh, but I can tell you one thing. I'm told that the commercial land is worth $100,000 an acre, and we'll probably have 15 acres of that and then another yep. 15 acres of, residential. of uh, residential land and hopefully four houses per unit. I, I know this, pay 275 for it, it's going to be worth, you know, $50, $60 more worth than that. I don't know. Uh, it'll be seven figures when, by the time we get around to selling it. So uh, the whole game here is um, 
I like land because I don't do anything except the brain work and, of course, some paperwork to get it ready to go. And now sometimes we have to rezone it. You know, some areas that takes eight, nine months. Some areas it takes three or four. So whatever it is, I structure the offers to give us time to get that done. Now lately, I've been structuring some because some of the sellers don't like terms. Imagine that. <laughs> Just like in a house business, okay? So lately I've been structuring them. So, okay, I'll pay you X. But I won't pay you until after we get it all approved by the city. And uh, maybe th within three months thereafter, we'll cash you out. And I'm putting together a fund right now to raise that cash. Or we can just get a private lender uh, to fund it. Because by the time I get ready to cash that seller out, that land will already be worth several times more than what I paid for it. So we should be able to get a private loan on it to cover the whole thing. Anyway, it's my creative brain and my old, old body that's making this work. It's my students that are sending us all of these deals on a regular basis. And we're only in it two months. Huh. Yeah. Huh. All right. It's been, it's been fast forward, full speed. So, and um, and we got some buildings coming in, which I also like. So, guys, if this is all over your head, uh, don't worry about it. Let me give you a place to go to get six commercial video trainings, for one thing. That is, let's see, The Mentor Podcast TheMentorPodcast.com forward slash commercial. TheMentorPodcast.com forward slash commercial. I got six videos that I did to train you on this commercial stuff. And here's the key. This doesn't take your credit. You're not going to be borrowing anything. It doesn't take your money if you find some good-looking partner like me. And it seems like I'm putting up all the money for these things, aren't I, so far? We've got to fix that. All right. I'm working on uh, that. And so the student gets a share of every deal they send. So uh, go watch the videos. They're free. You'll also learn about my commercial property boot camp coming up this coming April, right after the convention, April 21, 2, and 3 here in Jacksonville. That sucker will be full when the word gets out on what we're doing here. And it's there I'll tell you about the commercial mastermind group if you have interest in that. That's where you partner with me on deals. Um, the group is all about education, but it's also partnering with me if you want to, but don't have to partner with me to be in the group. So I'm not going to tell you any more about the mastermind group. Just know it exists, and you'll learn about it along the way, uh, but I'm, I cannot let you join it unless you've been to the commercial boot camp uh, or are going to attend the one in April. If you've been, by the way, contact us, and Tish will get you some information on it. I may accept you now as long as I know you're going to come back in April. If you've been... If you join the group, I'll let you come back free in April. But uh, you got to go get these videos right now because they're going to take them down shortly, and uh, you'll learn all about it anyway. So um, with that said, what should I have mentioned that I didn't mention? I mean, I have so many deals, there's no way I can cover them all. Yeah, no, I don't think so. This is going to be fun. Yeah, It's oh, going to be a lot of fun. Should, I think it's going to be a busy, busy, busy year for us. Sh should we tell them what my commercial mastermind group members get when we net at least a million dollars on a deal? <laughs> <laughs> I, I know it's killing you not to. Go for it. <laughs> okay. I, I got all kind of incentives built in on any type of deal that we do together. But if we net at least a million bucks, I have to buy them a brand new S550 Mercedes and personally drive it to their home yep. and hand them the keys. This ain't a lease. I got to buy them a car. <laughs> okay. So, uh, you know, just say it. Yep. Anyway, we're having a blast. She's working her tail off. I'm working my tail off trying to keep up here, and uh, we're going to be getting some help here shortly uh, because these deals, uh, once we actually take down a few of them, I know we're going to have our hands full. Yeah, All but right. it's exciting. It's a lot of fun. Okay. So go to thementorpodcast.com forward slash commercial. Get the free lessons, and I'll see you soon wherever I see you. Don't forget to get into the convention now. It's right around the corner now if you're not already there. I'll see you in Vegas maybe first. Well, that's it for this issue of The Mentor Podcast. Tune in to the next one. I hope to see you soon in person, probably at the convention prior to the commercial boot camp.